Good morning. I saw a documentary recently about a man named Marcus Samuelson. He really was a fascinating man. I was very impressed. It turned out that he is the owner of the Red Rooster Restaurant in Harlem, New York. It's a very high-end, successful restaurant, but it focuses on American comfort food with an African flair. It turns out that Marcus actually grew up in Sweden. He grew up with his mom and dad, Anne-Marie and Leonard, and his sister Linda. Every summer they loved going to the coast of Sweden and there he would get to go fishing with his dad and his uncles almost every day. I mean, they would catch mackerel, then they would get lobster and crawfish, and in the end, they would get to bring it home, and it was his grandmother, Helga, who taught him how to cook the food. She was an amazing cook. She would always teach them how to be cooking the fish or how to be um, pickling vegetables, how to make cookies, um, how to make apple jam. He fell in love with cooking because of his grandmother. She had such a passion, and she shared that passion with him. When he was 16 years old, he went to a culinary school there in Sweden. And from there, he went to Switzerland to continue his studies. From there, he went to do an internship in France. And then he came to the United States when he was 21 years old. He worked at a restaurant there in New York. He had saved his money. And then finally, he opened Red Rooster Restaurant. It has been a huge success. He has been named Best Chef of New York. He has won all kinds of awards. He's now in his late 40s, and he owns more than 20 restaurants. 20 restaurants that are located in New York, Sweden, Bermuda, in Chicago, Montreal, London, Miami. He has written cookbooks. He has all kinds of television shows. He's participated in Iron Chef. He has become so well-known and so incredibly successful. The fascinating thing is he wasn't always known as Marcus Samuelson. No, his original name was Kishamam Sigi. You see, he was born in Ethiopia. When he was just three years old, the war, the country was in civil war. It was his mother who took her two children, Marcus and his sister Linda, and took them for days journeys to find a Red Cross um, health center. There they got the help they needed. The two children would survive, but his mother would die from tuberculosis. Both of the children got better. It was a nurse there who had these two children and managed to make the connection with the Samuelsons in Sweden, and so they were adopted as their children. They grew up for being so incredibly blessed by the Samuelsons there in Sweden. And when he came to the United States, he then took the opportunity he had with the gift of this new country to truly pursue all the opportunities that it would provide. Marcus has not only become such a great success in the restaurants that he owns, the awards he has, the books he writes, the TV shows. But what I loved about him was the way that he decided to give back. He now supports CCAP, Careers Through Culinary Arts Program. They help 17,000 children, young people a year, start finding a career in culinary arts. City Harvest Food Bank in New York World Childhood Foundation, started by the Queen of Sweden. Three Goats, it's an actual um, nonprofit that he and his wife started to bring health and well-being to children and to women in Ethiopia. UNICEF, I mean, the list just goes on and on. He and his wife have two wonderful children. They live this great life in New York part of the time, in Sweden part of the time but he's never forgotten where he came from and all the other people in need. I couldn't help but think about the scripture in Numbers where Moses tells us, you must love the stranger for you were once a stranger in Egypt. 
to love the stranger, to show hospitality. We are told that over and over in the Old Testament. We're told that in the New Testament, it's what it means to be God's family. We all were once a stranger in a foreign land, and now it's our turn to show love to the stranger. It's when you and I do that, that truly we're gonna to help to build a better world by sharing God's love and bringing hope to others. I hope today you'll go out and love your neighbor, no exception. Have a great day.